way home from work. I probably need to stop by Walmart to get a rotisserie chicken because I'm not sure what I can whip up in two hours before Artemis goes to bed. Um, and that's with me taking care of him. I have to do a load of laundry, maybe two. So I am going to buy a chicken. <laughs> um, tomorrow's my dad's appointment, follow-up appointment for his test results for his blood work and his um, x-rays and I don't know. I don't know if I'm hoping for like a diagnosis or am I like or am I hoping for a well of course I'm hoping for a diagnosis but I'm, I'm hoping for like a positive outcome where it can be taken care of with medication or if worse comes to worse you need the surgery whatever you know but I'm hoping that it's not something like super super like like life and death serious um, I'm hoping for the best but kind of preparing for the worst um, I don't know how I feel I I was thinking about my relationship with my dad and how it's changed a lot over the years in the sense of like the roles that we play in each other's lives when I was younger I had so much love for my dad like I used to not be able to sleep until I knew he was home so it made it really hard on those days where he was binge drinking and gone for days at a time I think the most uh, he's been gone like drinking where we didn't know where he was was about two weeks um, I couldn't sleep because I knew my dad was out there somewhere um, and it just became like a thing like that just happened like every six months or so every year or so he'd have like one of these like long drinking binges that lasted a month maybe two on and off he'd lose his job and then it was like a cycle that started all over again and I, I would feel so much not anger but just hurt hurt in my heart and, and, and just worry about his well-being and where he was and hoping that nothing bad happened to him and my dad has been very lucky in his life that maybe I don't know what has happened to him out in the streets or with friends or people he's met but he's been lucky enough to be caught up with maybe some people that were giving him a roof over his head for the night or would call us to let us know where he was at and that he was alive and that we could come pick him up or drop him off you know he was very lucky in a lot of senses that he didn't lose his life um and i don't know how he did it and became sober on his own but he did and i'm very proud of him for that and i for i have forgiven him for everything that has happened um, with in my childhood because of his drinking it made me aware very early on in my life about bills and evictions and um, stress about paying stuff and having enough food on the table and keeping your electricity on and keeping your hot water on you know like it made me aware of those things at an age where you shouldn't be worried about that stuff you should be worried about going to school and what are you gonna wear and like your friends and you know um it, it has also shaped the person that i am today in the sense that i don't want anybody to take care of me i don't want to depend on anybody i want to be my own person i want to make my own money and remain independent so um it took me a while to figure all that out and I went through counseling when I was younger because I didn't want to grow up to be an angry um, adult and I didn't want to have a bad relationship with my dad. So he went to counseling with me a couple times and I'm good there, you know, but the role reversals in the sense that I'm the one who pressures him to, to take care of himself now. I'm the one who handles a lot of the things that he has questions on as far as insurance sometimes. Uh, I feel like his paperwork, going to the doctor, taking medications, like 
um, his citizenship um, renewal stuff when he was resident. Right now I'm in the process of trying to get him to be a citizen and it's not cheap. Um, so just all that stuff where I feel like I'm his lifeline in a sense because I have to be on top of the appointments and all that and the paperwork and making sure insurance is, is getting approvals and it's just a lot. I still think even with everything that went on in my life with him, I still have a very, very deep love for my father. And I am who I am in part because of the way that my childhood was. So I'm not angry at him. I'm just emotional because I'm really scared of what I'm going to hear tomorrow. I am. I've been lucky to have my dad a long time. He's gonna be he's he's 59. Um shit. I I never thought that I would admit this because honestly with the life my dad has led and my mom as well, I'm like I said, I'm I'm very surprised that they're still here. There's so much I want to do for them. I took them on their uh, first and only, and hopefully not the last, cruise. And <laughs> the look on their faces, like they never know what it was like to take a vacation. Uh, we live in a house right now. Or my dad can have his garden and do whatever he wants to do. You know, uh, there's so many things that I still want them to do. There's so many things that I don't feel like they got to experience. that I want to make happen for them because I think they deserve it yes my dad made a lot of mistakes in his life but ultimately I know he loves his children and I feel like I'm not only am I not ready for this or for whatever is about to happen tomorrow but I don't think he is either because a lot of his life, he was an alcoholic for a big important chunk of his life and that's the growing up of his children. And I know he feels a lot of regret for it. I know he does. Seems like I'm always crying on here, huh? I'm just really scared. I'm trying to be strong. I don't know why I, I feel like I don't have any more strength left.